what is going on everybody we got a lot to talk about not a whole lot of news but some very interesting things have just happened so if you like this type of content make sure that you hit that like button it helps push me up in the algorithm more people see it more people invest in luna classic and that's the way that it works so let's kick it off all right first terra money uh, the Terraform Labs people, they have let you know that you have until August 21 to file a claim if you are in a loss. If you have a crypto loss claim against Terraform Labs that arose before January 21 of 2024 or against TLL that arose uh, before July 1, uh, please file them by the preliminary crypto loss claim bar date. So you can follow that, take care of it yourself uh, in the event that that is something that you're interested in. Now, as far as news goes, uh, Terra Classic set for a major upgrade. 3.1.3 proposal has been, I mean, you know, basically uh, it is a lock here. There's no no votes. So, um, you know, there's no no, there's no abstains. Uh, we've already gotten quorum. So this is going to pass. So this will become the new uh, the new update. So uh, we're good for that. Now, what does that mean? Is there a continuation of this rally? Well, you know, guys, what I've told you previously is yesterday, I believe I said, you know, there's this little range here that we're going to talk about in just a moment. And we're going to go in between that. And if we go in between that, then as long as we're good, then we're going to test the top of that range and then if we get the breakout then there's a i gave you a box like three zeros 28 is going to be the next range to test so if that plays out that way then fantastic we've had a 3x 4x from where we are right now and everybody feels a little bit better about it and by the way utility just came to ustc so uh, if you're not bullish on ustc eh, today might be the time to to start looking at it and saying you know this might be an opportunity here but let's let's dig in a little further on-chain tax rate, there is a discussion still being had here. I told you we would talk about this over time, uh, and we're not going to have time for that today, but uh, I would encourage you to come to Commonwealth and really kind of look through this and, you know, quote-unquote, kick the tires, if you will. See if this is something that you would support right here. Um, and and this, this has gone pretty deep into uh, trying to figure this out and, and, you know, help to, in fact, maybe fix some of the problems. And, you know, if you pay attention here, uh, one of the sources of current burns, to, to, to be clear about how this is happening. And by the way, you're, you're going to see some familiar faces as we do this. Uh, 60 billion uh, from the Binance Hot Wallet, and then 16 billion from Lunk Fee Collector, uh, and then Terra Casino. Blaves, did you say Terra Casino? Why, yes, I did. So, so there are uh, quite a bit of uh, burners, if you will, out here, and you know it's just it's just not burning enough. We we know that. I mean, anybody who's been in this for a while, you know that it's not burning enough. We need to find new ways to do that. Now, uh, again, if if Binance says no to burns, then there's not really very much that we can do other than go for it. I I suppose now. Uh, could this end, and we should talk about this, this could end poorly. This could end with Binance saying, if you pass this, we will delist Luna Classic. So we need to be prepared just in case. But let's also remember that is uh, where the volume goes. That's where some of that burn happens. And the question would be, uh, are we going to burn more without it or are we going to burn less without it? So those are the things that we're going to need to, to look at. So when we talk about advantage, uh, a fixed 1.5% on-chain tax uh, until a total supply of $10 billion is a clear and concrete goal, which does not involve continually changing the rate. 3x increase in the burn rate substantially improves burns in the time to burn the total supply. Uh, 3x increase in the community pool funding uh, rates from tax substantially improves the funding rate of our community treasury. 3x increase in Oracle pool funding rate substantially improves the funding for long-term staking rewards. Uh, slowly, it's declined. And benefiting Lunk stakers and validators, the volume of the Lunk on-chain has steadily declined over the last two years, along with the APR, despite the taxation rate originally being lower from 1.2 to 0.2. A raise in the burn tax can signal to investors, exchanges, and the wider crypto community that we are getting serious about burning our supply, potentially bringing new investors in demand. A raise in the burn tax will allow our chain to capitalize on the bull market. A higher burn tax rate can discourage whales from moving their coins and dumping. Uh, the biggest complaint on dApps historically was of the method of tax implementation, not the gas. Tax to gas will make building on chain easier for dApps impacted on this. Uh, and, and as we go down here, it, basically, here's what we do. We hit control F because we want to search, right? And we want to see, you know, what does he say about Binance? That's what we really want to know. 
right? So for here, we've got Binance Lunk trading fees burned has contributed 61 billion, which is 48% of the total burn, the current total, okay? This led to the reminting of Binance manual burns into the community pool and Binance trading fee burns were halted unless the reminting was stopped. Uh, Binance started burning again monthly, but has since burned only 50% of their supply. And the majority of the burns come from Binance and we're recognizing Binance. Uh, we're, we're recognizing this, but we're not recognizing. Exchanges all supported the 1.2% burn tax previously, including Binance and KuCoin. Binance themselves would be unaffected as their internal wallets are already tax whitelisted. So, uh, so it wouldn't affect Binance. So it's possible that this is... Um, uh, th irrelevant if you will since it's whitelisted so we'll we'll look at this and we'll keep looking to to see uh and, and start picking it apart guys i want you to to understand that you know really a lot of this does ha come down to binance it does come down to kucoin it does come down to the volume now let's look at the volume as you see here in the volume uh 12 million dollars yesterday of the 22 million dollars was binance 1 million was kucoin uh bid five was pretty high orange x pretty high xt is pretty high if none of these, and they're all whitelisted, what are we doing? You know what I mean? Uh, you do have to ask the question, and I don't know the answer to this at this point. I'm, I'm just like you guys. I'm, I'm kind of a watcher here, trying to figure out, you know, what is uh, kind of going on, if you will. So it, it's interesting to me that this is happening, but um, if everybody's whitelisted, or at least most people are whitelisted, increasing the burns doesn't do anything because the it's whitelisted. It, it doesn't make... Anyway, let's move on here and, and let's just remember that. So let's talk price action real quick. What is going on, guys? You know when I give it to you, it's important. Cryptonomy.finance just launched their own channel. This is a key financial sector for information every single day about what's going on in cryptocurrency and the broader markets. It's on Telegram and it's cryptonomy underscore community. Go check it out today. You know staking is where it's at. There's panic in the market right now. Fear and greed index is down in the 20s right now. And you should know by this point, it is a time to buy. So my first deposit right now, you guys know I'm bullish on it, API3. I really think API3 does a 100 to 300 X in this next bull run. I just staked 4,000 API3. My reward on that, 2,892 API3. I think it's trading around $1.90 right now. So this is a big move for me, I think that this could produce some serious yield. Not to be outdone, you guys love Jasmine. I love Jasmine as well. I think it's gonna be the biggest thing uh, in, in blockchain for gaming at some point, maybe even integrated into Sony. 340,000 Jasmine right now. I just staked it for nine months. And my reward on this, 244,516 Jasmine. I'm super excited about this one. I think it's gonna be a big banger. But let's face it, the real money is made over here on the launch pool, water coin. Water, we talked about it already. It's already up 6x. They took a big profit on this already. Cookie, you remember Cookie trending on Dex Tools, up 5x right now. Potoshi up 3x. Huge yields being rewarded. Cryptopia TOS was also 3x in the last round. Cryptonomy.finance knows what they're doing when it comes to these big launches. Make sure that you're contacting Cryptonomy.finance and if you do, you can use their 24-7 support line as well. Uh, you can convert your collateral into whatever it is that you need because they hold almost every crypto asset that you can possibly think of for staking and rewards. So sign up to Cryptonomy.finance today. Oh, and one more thing. In about a month, Cryptonomy is going to announce its own launch pad. It'll start launching its own. And guess what? You, as a customer and a VIP, VIP user, you're going to get first crack at all of the best projects. It's not financial advice. I'm always right. Because uh, so the, the, the Ethereum ETFs were approved and the market has immediately dumped because U.S. market are takers. They're not makers. And the, the rest of the markets have kind of declined as well. Uh, Ethereum really the only kind of bright spot in the course of today. Rest of the market been dumping broadly, down $31 billion. Really weird. Uh, I did think that we would get some kind of hype out of the Ethereum ETF, but the Ethereum ETF was approved. And if you consider uh, this move right here to be the Ethereum hype, well, then it belies the fact that it's not really done anything. Like, it's not really done anything to get close to uh, previous highs. Like, you know, so... Um, we had this descending channel, broke out. We have another kind of descending channel here. Looks like it's kind of breaking out. 
will it continue to break out? I, don't, I mean, I don't know at, at this point. Like, I, I expected a 4,000, a 4,300. I really did expect some kind of pump off of Ethereum that was not coming off of a dump back to 2,800, right? I mean, that should be reasonable to expect that we got a little bit more than this ridiculousness. So, uh, we're seeing plenty of positivity. We're seeing plenty of positive information. And trading, as I do this, trading just opened on the Bitcoin ETF, on the Ethereum ETFs. So, all of a sudden, we're starting to see Ethereum spike. It just went up to 3,500. So, perhaps we're going to see uh, some kind of moves coming. Uh, we just saw Luna Classic also in the last few minutes here. Let's hit the refresh button here. You see we got a green candle after a big sell-off here. Uh, a lot of money just suddenly started pouring back into the market. So we may get the pump after the ETF. We got a dump on the Bitcoin ETF. We might get a pump on the Ethereum ETF. I don't know yet. It's still early, but we didn't get the pump that I thought. So uh, that could mean broadly that we're going to get it on the rest of the market. Now, this dump down that happened a little while ago, um, you know, again, we, we're going to have to break through a, a couple of levels. So let's look at the day chart and get an idea of it. And then I'm going to back mine up with a little bit of additional information. Now, because there's a dip down here and right here, I think this 13,001 level is gonna be another big uh, sort of resistance point. So what I'm looking for is, we, we just back tested this, uh, descending, this, this uh, ascending line here. So uh, there's gonna be a pump here too, most probably the 200 MA, uh, and then a break above that into the 11,675, a break here, a break here, a break out, a boom, boom, and then uh, it comes up into this range right here, and we should do this. Now, um, what are the odds of that happening? Well, uh, a matter of fact, somebody else, uh, uh, technical guru, if you will, uh, says Lunk grabbed sell-side liquidity and shifted structure ready to move to the upside. We can clearly see the displacement leg up breaking above the last daily swing high. Uh, you can also notice we inverted the daily fair value gap and turned it into an inversion. This zone will support the price higher. Daily closure below 56 uh, 97 will invalidate this scenario. We're not there. Uh, daily price fills the weekly fair value gap around. This is four zeros, but this we're going to cross that out. Should be three zeros, fourteen five, and close above it, ready to extend the target as shown in blue. So uh, he's looking at the same same line right here that we're looking at right there, about thirteen one, which represents this right here, and then this sort of settling area and resistance and. Uh, right here. So he's agreeing kind of that this is going to end up the same way, that we're really uh, in in this uh, cut of explosive price action. If we can get into the range, if we get into the range uh, at, at 30.14.9, uh, around 15. So 30.15, then we're going to have a big spike. And then now we're going to have that aggressive move. Where does that aggressive move end for him? Around 27.890. Where does my aggressive move end? Uh, around 28. So we're basically at the same level, the, 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 the level that he has that I've added to mine that we did not have before that didn't match was this 13.1. And I'll grant that that's probably going to represent a resistance area right there. Because once we get to the natural top of this, then we're going to have some sell-off happening. Because that's what paper hands do. And that's what we're full of. We're, we're full of paper hands. No offense to you uh, if you have paper hands. I don't want to cut myself on your hands. Uh, so, paper cuts hurt. So, um, you know, broadly speaking, we're in a good position. So... Uh, let's move on and let's continue on with this. And USTC not pumping yet, still dumping a little bit, dumping four and a half percent. But it's weird that that's happening because Membrane Protocol uh, are offered uh, USTC as collateral for their new new stablecoin CDT. The proposal is being voted on. If accepted, it will be a nice gain for USTC. Different chains are starting to see the value and importance of USTC. We are not far from the days when USTC will be much more valuable. And you can come to cdt.money stake and you can come check out what it is that they are proposing. So uh, this is creating value and a use case for uh, th this project. And accept the rules right here. And I agree. And then here's your governance proposals that you can uh, list USTC as collateral. And you can see there's 100% so far for it. So, uh, you know, it's already reached quorum. It will happen. So... Um, fantastic to see some use come out here. You should get bullish when you see stuff like this. Now, um, we'll continue on with, with that. Let's get over here. Proposals were done. Uh, Lunk burn tracker, way low, 197 million. But 
Why is it why is it low? Because you're not at Terra Casino. You're not over here playing some PvP poker or doing some sports-based wagering. Did you know that the Louisville Cardinals, my favorite college football team, are about to start playing? Uh, did you know the Georgia Bulldogs are going to try to win again? Did you know the Alabama Crimson Tide and Nick Saban's no longer there? And Paul Feinbaum predicts they're going to go 10-2. and two. Do you know all these things? No, you don't know all these things because I know all these things because I'm a nerd for sports. So... If you want to be a nerd for sports, then you can come over here and you can do some sports-based wagering. But look over here, uh, Counter-Strike Go, League of Legends, there are plenty of different things that you can wager on. And uh, if you're not happy with that, you got slots, uh, you got roulette, you got game shows, you got all kinds of different games. Crypto trading, if you want to try your, your hand at that, uh, or you can go PvP somebody else if you want to. But make sure you check out Terra Casino, sponsor the channel today. Also, if you're doing your trading, make sure that you're doing it on Terraport.finance. Terraport.finance, it's where all the cool kids go. This is basically the cool kids club of cryptocurrency. So uh, if you're not here, you're probably a nerd. I mean, it's, you know, it's science, bro. Uh, and by the way, my rewards today, 1337. Put that in your pipe and lead, lead, lead it, lead, lead it, lead, yeah, lead. Um, anyway, uh, we, we can claim the rewards. We're not going to claim that yet. Uh, we're going to go to the launch pad over here because we want to turn this in right now. Boom. Uh, we still haven't done the swap. We could do the swap, but um, I'm, I'm kind of... Uh, I'm kind of feeling good about holding on to uh, what I have right now. Uh, I don't want to do uh, any any kind of swap that, that messes up my holding. I think Luna Classic is probably going to have a rip, and then I think everything paired to it is going to have a rip pretty soon. So now um, it, I'm the kind of person that would do a, a little bit of trading, but now I just kind of want to, if you look at the pairing, you'll see that everything is unfavorable uh, because those are down, but Luna Classic is up. Uh, so uh, your, your, your favorability here. A little bit different. So um, uh, let's. I'm going to let it ride for just a little bit longer and see how it goes. Um, also, by the way, uh, remember there were a few of them that were down pretty big. I mean, there's a lot of money moving in and out of this market as we speak right now. Um, so you know, going down this list, you'll see a few of the familiar faces. Um, uh, a lot of weird sort of odd launches, but you know, I I, I don't know. Uh, I think we're going to have a, a nice little kind of run here, but you can see Cookie here. You can see, um, there, well, there were quite a bit of them uh, a little bit earlier. Familiar faces, which you can get on Terraport.finance. Um, so check all of these out, and uh, let's wrap this up, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate each and every one of you. Make sure that you're checking out Terra Casino. Make sure you're checking out Terraport.finance. And have just a little bit of patience here, because I think that we are on the, um, we're on the cusp of a breakout for Luna Classic, it's looking like it. The market is is looks like it's accepting the range. Uh, it, it's wanting to push up. It's about to bounce. It's about to bounce. Uh, the RSI looks like it's ready to bounce. Uh, the 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 market. The, this might be a tough market for today, by the way, because the Ethereum ETF is like it didn't get the super pump, so we'll probably get the super dump because it's the American market. American markets are are weak, paper handed hose, if you will. So. Uh, you know, we might have some problems over the next day or two, but within two, three weeks, this thing is going to be explosive. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. And remember, not financial advice, but I'm always right.